Call the meeting to order. Call the roll. Trustee Healy. Here. Trustee Katsinas. Here. Trustee Milani. Here. Trustee Compass. Here. Trustee okay. Reardon. Here. Trustee Radishevsky. Here. Mayor Peacock. Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of the April 18th, 2022 Committee of the Whole Minutes. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Katsinas. I move to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of the Committee of the Whole of April 18th, 2022. Second. Call the roll. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Compass. Aye. Trustee Reardon. Aye. Trustee Radishevsky. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Facilities and Operations Master Plan Presentation. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Healy. I move to recommend to the Village Board to authorize the Public Works Department to proceed with final design development for the Public Works Site and Frederick Lobby Center uh, building for relocation of the Cultural Art Center in fiscal year 2022 and Recreation Administration Building in fiscal year 2023 based on the final version of the Facilities and Operations Master Plan. Second. And I'll entertain a motion, uh, a, uh, a motion to amend the motion to the Franklin Levy Center. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Compass. Aye. Trustee Reardon. Aye. Trustee Rasheski. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. And if you want to go ahead and start the presentation. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Trustees. I'd like to introduce uh, two of the key parties in with the Legat. Um, Len Winters is to my right, and Kristen Eastman is to his right. Uh, they were both uh, very instrumental in coming up with what they did this over this past couple months, and we'd like to present that to you t tonight. With that, I'm going to turn it to Len. Thank you, Joel. Um, we were brought on by the, the village to analyze 21 facilities um, around the, the village. Uh, you know, what, what, the first thing we did, it was a, a four-part study. So the first thing we did was we looked at the facilities for, you know, just the, the shape of the facilities, the state they were in. So we looked at them for, uh, we assessed the sites, we assessed uh, structural, we assessed envelopes, we assessed, um, you know, the infrastructure, and then we also looked at codes, we looked at, um, we, we just looked at things like how the people used them. So, uh, you know, we wanted to get, uh, look at your buildings for, you know, the sake of what did they look like in, at, in their present state. Then we, uh, then we met with the people who used the buildings, so we tried to come at it for, from a different standpoint. Were these buildings functional? Did uh, the users who were in the buildings, did they, could they work efficiently? And then we, you know, we looked at it from that standpoint as to how could we improve the buildings. And then finally, after we did that, we also took two, two other facilities uh, to a different, to a higher level, which was a, a design development state, which is we looked at the Recreation Administration Center and we looked at Public Works. And the, the re, you know, we, we tried to, uh, after we looked at those first two uh, studies, then we tried to figure out how we could make these buildings work better. So uh, we'll take you through what we did. For our phase one analysis, um, here are some of the things we looked at. We looked at sites, uh, you know, uh, main, some of the things we found were, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, entries, uh, concrete being cracked, things like that. It wasn't that much, but you know, those, those were the things we studied. Then we looked at envelopes. How could we improve some of the envelopes of some of the buildings? We looked at the interior state of some of the buildings. You know, we, we saw things like, you know, you had old finishes, things that needed to be freshened up. And then we looked at, we started getting to, into things like structural systems. You know, some of the buildings, uh, you know, like for instance, one of the well house, we thought that the structure on that was, you know, not in a great state. 
so we, that was something we recommended had to be looked at. Then we looked at infrastructure, uh, you know, things like your mechanical systems, your electrical systems, and gave an assessment on, on you know, what needed to be improved. And then finally, we looked at codes. Uh, you know, for instance, uh, if we found any code, vi code violations, um, you know, how, how were the buildings not keeping up with what our current uh, codes are? So th those are all things we looked at. We put together a report and ultimately we, we made a recommendation. So what we did was we spread the 21 buildings into three categories. Buildings that we felt are in great shape, uh, you know, good condition. We, the recommendation was those things could stay online. Uh, we didn't really need to do much except there were some things, some minor repairs that needed to be done to them. Then there was a second category which was buildings that we believe should be monitored because there were some concerns that we thought should be taken care of and then finally a fourth category of buildings that we felt were at a stage where uh, the condition they were in versus the cost of repair versus uh, their use we thought we recommended that those buildings might be consolidated and their use could be moved to uh, one of your other facilities and take and then ultimately taken offline um, we put together this matrix which was which would kind of give you an understanding of you know what we looked at so we looked at we you know we highlighted the structural systems the mechanical systems just about every system we looked at and then we gave it a rating whether it was in you know great condition to poor condition and we did a color coding system for that so you can see things that are green would be in good condition all the way down to things that are bright red so um, again we broke that into the three categories the buildings that are you know should be kept on Line, buildings that uh, should be monitored, and then finally buildings that should be um, taken offline. And then we also gave you a, just a, an estimate of how, how long we think these buildings could last. And ultimately that was the end of our phase one report. And then we moved into the second phase where we started talking to the people and finding out how the, they use the buildings. Hello. Okay, so looking at our phase two assessment, this is where we are looking closer to the function of the buildings and not just um, their structure and their um, current conditions. Um, the, we're gonna focus just on a couple of the buildings uh, for the phase two presentation today. This is the Recreation Administration Building. Uh, what was discovered at this building was that there was um, spaces that were not being used efficiently, um, including the cell block area, which is currently used for storage, um, but the cell block layout is not conducive to that purpose. Also, some of the office spaces on the off upper floor are not being utilized, some are um, not, um, are, are more vacant, and then others are not being um, utilized good enough. And the staff is in different places. Some of the other issues was that Recreation Administration is located in multiple buildings, mostly storage. Also the Parks Department is in a different building, and to consolidate the department to one location would be desired. The Frank Loeb Center um, is in good condition, but its spaces are also underutilized. Um, with the preschool function, this building um, could house all of the functions of the Cultural Arts Center, which was identified in the phase one uh, portion uh, to be a building that would potentially no longer um, be operated. So looking at moving that function to this building, um, we could do that with some renovations to the building. Uh, this would be uh, designed in a later uh, phase. This is just kind of a test fit view, um, but we could repurpose some of these areas and uh, have the gym also, while functioning as a gym, maybe also be a part of a theater. We could have um, storage for theater in this building, though uh, well house storage would probably still need to remain due to the size of this building. And then multifunction purpose rooms um, for some of the larger spaces that are available. 
on the upper floor. This is where the preschool is located with some renovation of this space. We could make larger dance studios, multi more multi-purpose use spaces, and keep the walking track, um, which could also maybe double as a catwalk for theater performances when in use. And besides some of the renovations that would need to take place to change the function of the building, uh, the phase one um, identified Re repairs and maintenance would also need to be uh, completed. The Civic Center um, for its main purpose would still just remain as is and it would just also be able to be used as overflow for the Cultural Arts Center because it would be in the same campus and their functions would be very close together. So when some of the rooms in the Civic Center are not being utilized during the day or for other purposes, they could be used as overflow for programs for the Cultural Arts Center, kind of make more of a campus feel for that. Looking at the Recreation Administration building, we took this one step further besides just analyzing its function um, to propose some potential solutions for um, consolidating storage spaces and the offices. As you can see in this illustration, the Recreation Administration storage is located in multiple buildings across the village, and we're looking to consolidate that. In order to do that, we would want to do some renovations to the lower level. This would remove the cell block configuration and create large flexible storage spaces um, that could also potentially be accessed through garage doors from the exterior for easy um, access with pallets and larger items. And also on the old locker room area, uh, redoing the toilet area and additional storage spaces in the upper um, right hand corner would also allow to get almost all of the storage that we would need for the building. On the upper level, um, this would just be repurposing the spaces, uh, redoing some layouts uh, of the cubicle spaces and redefining offices uh, to better use some of the spaces, also creating a multi-purpose kind of break room slash meeting room that could be used um, with the kitchen. Um, and as you can see in the chart that we are almost at the exact storage number that we would need to be at and with some consolidation of storage we should be able to meet the demands uh, for the department with doing some renovations to this building. I think we're going to go to public works. After that, the next building we looked at was Public Works. Um, it was slightly larger and it had a few more concerns than Recreation Administration. The main concerns were, um, I'll start with uh, the NRF facility, which is um, separated, so there was a desire to consolidate that, the, the staff at Public Works, because the management is currently at Public Works um, and most of their vehicles are there too. The other things that we were looking at was um, the, the existing parking lot at Public Works was too small. There was a desire to expand that. Um, we had issues with a with the existing uh, garages, the the metal garages on the southwest in the southwest corner. Uh, they are old buildings that are past their useful life, and there was a desire to um, upgrade those to a more modern, uh, more modern garage facility. Also, uh, the existing north garage, the main garage, um, that is. Uh, we, we found after studying, uh, you know, the vehicle fleet that it wasn't large enough to hold the, the uh, current vehicles that Public Works has. So there was a desire to expand that to, inlet, to uh, make it fit the, the current fleet. Um, there was also a unused triangle in the southeast corner of the site. Uh, it's currently overgrown um, and there was a desire to um, reclaim that site so that Public Works could use it for outdoor activities and make, bring it back into the, into the fold. A um, couple of other things uh, that were looked at, there's an existing fueling, fueling island. Uh, the fuel tanks needed to be replaced, so that was something we looked at. And also there is a um, police firing range on the site. Um, we'll go into that a little, a little more, but uh, it, it posed some challenges. One of the things was activities from the, the firing range could be heard at the restaurants uh, to the east. Uh, so that was something that wasn't desirable. Uh, 
uh, you know, so there was the, the desire to move it out of there and also just the conditions that it created on site. And then the uh, existing impound yard, which is also on the site, it uh, started, in, it, when you see our, we, us get into the design, you'll see that it starts to encroach on the use of the public works site. And it does currently, but um, you know, so it, the new design shows that it actually it becomes more of an issue because it starts squeezing the space that the trucks can use. So we took all of these into consideration when we, were, when we started um, looking at the new design for this facility. Also, uh, I mentioned that the NRF staff was uh, separated. Uh, you can see from this graphic that uh, NRF has materials and uh, staff and vehicles just separated throughout the village. Um, while, you know, their main fleet and their, their uh, management is at Public Works. And there was desi the desire to bring everybody together. So that was something we considered. Um, also, I mentioned the vehicle fleet, fleet before. This is a list of all the, the, the vehicles that Public Works has. Um, you know, there are some that are identified with stars beside them. Those could be stored outside, so we didn't take that into consideration when we redesigned the garage. But we did uh, redesign the garages so that they could hold the, uh, the vehicle fleet that uh, Public Works currently has. And then finally, I talked about the firing range. Um, so this is the makeup. It is a, uh, it has a target wall and then wood slat walls on the on either sides they're open um, as you can see from the, the pictures there's a close-up that shows you how the, the walls are made up and then the final picture shows you uh, look straight down the driveway to public works uh, you can actually see one of those wood slat walls so we thought this wasn't uh, uh, this didn't create a safe condition you know just just in case something happened because there are trucks coming up and down that that uh, that driveway and you know you never know what could happen so we thought this was something that we should consider taking care of um, so with the, the firing range, actually, I'll move right into that. Uh, we were told that the village does own land that's right next to their current bulk storage site. Uh, you can see that long, uh, narrow site at the bottom uh, in, in red. That's the bulk storage site. And then there's a yellow triangle or yellow uh, square just up to the, the right of it. That is free land that the village owns. And it just so happens that that would be enough to house a new firing range and an impound site, so we considered that. Also, uh, this site is close to industrial buildings and it is close to the uh, existing fire training facility, so it, we, putting a, a shooting range there would be putting like next to like and we wouldn't, we'd get rid of that problem of when the when activity is happening at the firing range, people in the restaurants would, would hear the activity. Um, and this is a quick overview of what the new design would be. So what we're doing here is uh, I, I talked about the metal garages on the south side being past their useful life. So uh, the, the concept would be to remove those garages and replace them with the new NRF facility, which would house all of the NRF staff, um, bring all the functions back to the public works site. Um, and then on the north side in the, the space of the existing garage, what we would do is we would uh, just expand the existing north garage so that you can see we're, we're designating all the vehicles in the, with those colors uh, so we would have we would uh, rebuild these garages so that they would house the vehicles that need to be stored, stored inside we'd also add a new salt shed and a uh, a new uh, loading dock to this facility, and then there would be some uh, site improvements, things such as adding, uh, extending the parking lot, as I spoke about before. We would also add a way scale at the uh, northeast corner of the site, and then at the southeast corner, we would uh, we would reclaim that triangle by paving it, adding uh, their loading, their uh, material bins there. We would also have areas for outdoor storage, and we would have uh, storage sheds that they could actually put materials into uh, the things that needed that didn't have to necessarily be indoors but they would uh, they'd want to be covered from the rain so that that's the concept for the south side of the site and then there would be some um, improvement inside the building uh, mainly we would add a uh, or expand their current um, their, their current lunchroom, make that a new training room. That would become a multi-purpose multi space that could be used for training for uh, lunches and also just a, a staff break room. And then there would be some a modification to a couple of the uh, a couple of the spaces, the roll call center and the um, current conference room so that uh, those functions would be moved to the new multi-purpose room so they could become offices for staff. 
Um, this is proposed to be done in phases. So uh, as you can see, we're showing uh, this would be phase one where all the site work would be done. Uh, so that would include the things I talked about, expanding the parking lot, uh, the doing the fuel island, uh, the storage bins. Uh, that would be phase one. Uh, um, after that, uh, we would move into second phase, which would be adding the um, NRF facility, uh, doing the interior renovations at the existing building. Uh, phase three would then involve uh, the redesign of the shooting range. Uh, here you can see a blow up. Um, so on the left you can see the site. We're showing the uh, new shooting range at the left side with, with um, a new impound yard on the, on the right. Um, and then the, the blow up shows you know, just the, the way this thing would be, would be configured. Uh, we're, you know, it's got a, an entrance. We're showing a, a new uh, training facility. Uh, we're also showing a, a simulation room. There would be a 25 yard shooting range. Um, um, and then just the functions that would, you know, create a, a state-of-the-art shooting range. Um, and then we're also showing the ability to drive into this so that if the police needed to, they could actually bring vehicles in uh, so that they could uh, work on uh, vehicle simulations. So that would be the, the concept with this one, just a, a new shooting range um, with an impound yard on that, on that site that's currently owned by the village. Um, and then finally, uh, phase four would involve expanding the north garage. So this would be the larger of the, the two garages, and this would be where uh, most of the, the vehicle fleet would be stored. We'd also have the, the uh, salt storage bin and a new um, loading dock. And then just finally, we did a summary of what we're thinking this would, this would come to. Uh, so we're showing that we do, this new facility would provide about 5,000 square feet more storage than, than what's currently there. Uh, and then also just looking at the phases, uh, phase one would be, you know, the target would be for that to come in at 5 million. Phase two target would be to come in at 5 million. Phase three, the shooting range would be a little more expensive at six and a half. And then uh, phase four, another 5 million. Um, and that would be the, the bulk of what we're doing for the, the uh, renovation of public works. And with that, that would, that's, the, that's our presentation. Any questions? Um, Mr. Chairman? <clears throat> Trustee Milani? Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, I know, George, we've talked about the situation with the garage at the Rec Admin building multiple times. Um, so it looks like here we're kind of still going to be keeping our near end of life emergency vehicles outside versus in a garage. That is the plan. So there, there, is, no, um, there is no additional garage space for vehicles. Okay. And I think one of the other things we talked about is NIMS compliance, having a rest area for people if we have to actually activate the center. For the EOC. Yes. And uh, do we have a space in mind for that if we need to? Because currently no, but we, we, when we do the currently no, but when we do the final design, we'll have to look at that then. Okay, and we'll also be removing the changing rooms and the locker rooms, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, those would be the locker room and the restrooms would be remodeled. Okay, um, and then as far as the new range, um, the the range is going to be completely enclosed. Yes. Okay, so there'll be no outside yes so so yeah the noise won't be an issue at all then in, in the Correct. new area okay and the the training room and the simulator in there will that be moved from the police department then to the to the to the new range the simulator and the training room that we have there we were thinking the simulator but the, the tra there's a training room next to the current uh, r range on site okay. so that would be what that training room would be uh, but the simulator room uh, we were talking with the police potentially could be in that building um, because they're a little tight at PD as right. well so yes. this could free up some space for them so, okay those are my questions thank you any other questions or comments 
so Mr. Mayor, this is this this is part of our overall comprehensive review of all of our capital items, and what will happen here is we will take all this information with with the information that we have for all of our other large, longer range plans as part of our five-year financial that will be occurring in the coming months. Okay. Mr. Mayor, has one of these been done? You know, over the last five or ten years, is this adding on to something that was previously done? Is this the first time that we're, as far as you know, Mr. Mayor? I don't know of any. It hasn't been done since I've been here. Okay. To the best of our knowledge, no. This is this is probably the first time to at least every ten years to do something like this. I mean, this is something. It's that that would be that would be a very good practice. Yeah, Correct. because things change in <coughs> in, in ten years, but. Um, but we found as we were kind of going, we, you can't do this piecemeal. And so they did a fantastic job doing this in 22 slides. But if you can imagine all the work, all the puzzles that you had to kind of move around to try to get this to, to make sense. And, and you know, that's with the growth of the village, though, right? I mean, we had you know a plan to begin with, and they added, and it got bigger, and there's new buildings, and new, you know they just kind of pieced it together, opposed to now doing a comprehensive plan over all of them. Correct, okay. right. And, and the, for example, the, the building that they're talking about in Public Works right now, the, the, the old building, that was built in World War II. Correct, it, it's, it dates before 1940. It was the existing building when they had- I'm just the, trying to give a little background here. Yeah. People maybe hearing or seeing this or you see it in the paper tomorrow or something about you know, money that's gonna be spent. People would like to hear a little bit about why you know, this is necessary. I clearly understand it, but you know, why this is necessary. Uh, yep. for us to do this uh, and, and figure out where we're going and have a plan going forward. And it's all necessary because we want to continue to provide the best services possible. And, uh, and we want to eliminate whatever waste we have. And we have, we have waste right now. We're, we have wasted space. We have wasted time having our folks running around everywhere. So this is, this is, this is all part of a lean effort to just and to continue to provide the quality service. And, and trying to prioritize as well with, uh, you know, for example, the uh, um, with the public works site we already talked about how it's it's just old, right? And so might as well if we're going to rebuild things, make it uh, sized more appropriately with the additional land that we acquired um, uh, with a swap um, a few years back, and then um, Franklin Levy Center. Um, one of the things about these buildings that we found out is, or that we've learned through this process, is they were kind of designed to get awards, and we know they weren't designed very well for functionality, and they did things like put drywall on the outside of the buildings, which we're handling this year. Um, that drywall soft soffits, which what could go wrong in in uh, the cold weather <laughs> and the climate that we have here. Um, but uh, the Franklin Levy Center, maybe that make it a little bit more usable. And then, as we know, the Cultural Arts Center. Um, there's an ability to consolidate that and then maybe get that over to the school district, which we, you know everyone knows we've offered to the school district so that they can do early childhood learning and potentially the preschool program and get schools more into the, uh, into the schools where they belong. Um, and then also some of the buildings we have, like uh, the, the well houses, we don't really need anymore. We use them for storage. So if we can consolidate the storage and we don't have to maintain these well houses as they get you know, old and they're no longer useful, we can just get rid of them. And uh, obviously the old village hall, which dates back as far as my memory goes, so, it, so that's over 50 years, that building is definitely beyond its useful life. Um, so there's things that we can do there. Uh, lastly, the, uh, the garage for the rec department, which also is a, you know, kind of a, it was a bit of an afterthought, and we do use it, uh, but we can we can consolidate all that. So if we can bring all that together, um, that's just going to help us to get rid of some of these buildings that we don't have to maintain anymore, and uh, get better facilities, and then also less expensive to operate going forward. Any other comments? Call the roll. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Radishevsky. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Compass. Aye. Trustee Reardon. Aye. Mayor Peacock. Aye. Pete's Fresh Market. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Pete's Fresh Market requests for a modification from the building code as adopted and amended by the village code. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Compass. I move to recommend to the Village Board of Trustees to approve the requested modification from the building code as adopted and amended by the Village Code to allow a reduction in the open space requirement for an unlimited area building from 40 feet with a four, three hour exterior wall and 30 feet with a three hour exterior wall 
excuse me, to 30 feet with a three hour exterior wall for no more than 62 feet in length, where the proposed addition is limited by the dedication of former Ravinia Avenue right of way to the Orland Park Public Library, IBC 2018, section 507.2.1. Second. And Ed, could you just give us a brief, uh, you know, in general what this is, is that we dedicated uh, some of former right of way to the to the library, which is open space. It's part of their landscaping. If we still owned it, we would be able, they, they wouldn't even need this. Um, but because they do, we have to reduce the limit from 40 feet to 30 feet. But it's still all landscaping that uh, were that extra 10 feet. Uh, that's correct. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Other members of the committee. The the issue arose from generally a building code requirement, which is in relation to the fire code, with an area that exceeds certain or with a building that exceeds certain area. There's a, a setback requirement to a property line and that setback uh, can include uh areas that are right away, as the mayor mentioned. However, because a portion of this setback area was dedicated to the library, uh, this uh, variance request was necessary. In addition, prior to uh, investigating the variance or pursuing the variance, the petitioner worked with the village to investigate other options, as they should prior to um, requesting the variance, one of which was potent well, fireproofing the interior of the building. However, after investigation of um, what it would take to do that, it would impact impede some of the operations that the, the tenant would like to see. Sometimes that uh, the coating that uh, is used for the fireproofing is not exactly the best to have above a grocery store. Um, and that was communicated to us, so we looked at other options. And in this instance, um, what the, they are doing is requesting the minimum uh, amount of code relief in order to be compliant and currently although the area that they are they need to be set back from is the library property there are no structures that are built on it so um, it is the staff's best uh, recommendation that this variance be granted and the petitioners are here from Pete's Fresh Market this portion of the request um, they wanted to get some feedback from the committee before they move forward with their final engineering and plans they were recommended for approval at the Planning Commission for the entire development and once uh, should this variance be or should the committee see this recommend favorably they will pursue uh, preparing their final plans once those are ready they will be presented to the board for uh, final approval are there any comments I mean it, when I talk to staff this is kind of a no-brainer because if mm -hmm. again if we hadn't dedicated the right away it would be we wouldn't even have to worry about this Call the roll. Trustee Compass. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Reardon. Aye. Trustee Radoszewski. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I could, uh, Gene Grinkovich is here from uh, from Pete's Fresh Market. Gene, if you can just, and then maybe uh, we're all excited about Pete's opening. So uh, 2022, right? 2023. Oh, 2023. Mm -hmm. Back a year. <laughs> 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 right, we're excited. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Great, thanks. Main Street Triangle Consultant presentation. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Milani. Move to recommend to the Village Board of Trustees approval of the conceptual master development plan as presented, generally incorporating the recommendations of the plan commission. Second. We have a presentation. Yes. Uh, Do you want me to pick? No, no, no. He's going to queue it up. Okay. Ed's going to queue it up here. Tonight, Edwards Realty uh, Company is going to present um, information that the village had uh, retained Edwards to investigate the development potential of the Main Street Triangle. Uh, and, and to explain sort of the phase where we're at, <laughs> previously the village had gone to RFP and, and selected structured development to come to a master development agreement and ultimately develop the Main Street Triangle area. 
uh, the village was notified by structured development that given the circumstances with the pandemic that they could no longer move forward with what was uh, going to be the master plan. As such, and in the interest of the, the village board and the residents of the village of Orland Park, we still wanted to investigate if development was feasible. In order to do so, we engaged Edwards Realty and they did a year of due diligence as well as met with key stakeholders including members of the staff um, to understand what the vision of the board was. And through those meetings, they further investigated with the development community to see if there were users that were still interested and able to make this development happen. Um, what, you're, what will be presented now is um, the consultant's findings. The, this information was also presented at the April 12th Plan Commission meeting with the Plan Commission ultimately voting in favor and recommending approval of the con conceptual plan and narrative. They did mention um, several items that they would like to make sure are included and I will mention those now and the reason that I'm bringing those up is after the presentation from Edwards Realty when this is taken for a vote by the village board, um, if you read the motion at, and include the, the, the terms as presented, that includes the items that were um, investigated by the plan commission or, or kind of specifically requested from the plan commission. To a certain extent, those items were included in the discussion that took place, but for clarification, um, if we, I will reiterate them and if the, the motion will be to recommend as presented. If there are any changes to what the planning commission had uh, discussed or recommended or if there are any changes to what um, Edwards Realty presents, then most certainly the, the board is able to adjust those motions or add or take away any of those items. Um, so in specific, the uh, <coughs> The information that um, the Planning Commission wanted to see is they wanted to make sure that if we consider uh, leasing space at the metro station, this is a little far past where we are at this point, but if that it takes place, that we investigate with whoever the selected developer is, that it would be possible to be a tax generating use. Um, in addition, they want to see an overlook for the detention pond and maintain all the existing pathways that connect to the Main Street Triangle and to a certain extent the discussion was to expand upon those existing uh, pedestrian and bicycle paths so that there are more points of entry for non-automobiles to the, the Main Street Triangle. Um, and then the, the final sort of, uh, one other thing in uh, to sort of piggyback on that idea, they mentioned pretty specifically that the detention pond that is existing at the site should be utilized as, a, as an asset. And if there's any way to create that as more of an amenity as opposed to stormwater, just strictly for stormwater purposes, that the selected developer investigate those opportunities. Um, finally, this one uh, is just basically something, a general development principle, but they wanted to they made the comment that the, the, the selected developer should prioritize the, the land uh, available to based on the market demand. So there's a range of land uses that the consultant will speak about that some of the sites may be suitable for. Obviously, all of those land uses don't require the same amount of land, infrastructure, or things, but the comment was specifically to say, if you're going to uh, recommend for, let's say, a hotel or a large user of land, that you prioritize those recommendations so that you can fill each parcel with the highest and best use. Um, and ultimately, that was the, the plan commission's discussion and recommendation. Um, so that was, was a re reviewed and recommended for approval, and that's where, what leads us today. The same presentation with that information included will be presented to the committee, and uh, Ramsey Hassan from Edwards Realty Company is here to present. And just so the board is aware, these are not specifics. These are, uh, this is a general plan for what we have to go out for, what, 45 days? Is that, so we, so, yeah, after, after this, there will be an RFP that will be issued. Uh, Edwards is our uh, consultant at this stage. After this, uh, using this concept plan, uh, an RFP will be issued. We'll be open for 45 days, and then we will have 
uh, developers that will submit proposals and then we will um, evaluate those proposals ultimately leading to an, a master development agreement with a developer. But, but this will basically inform the RFP. Go ahead. All right, thank you very much. Pleasure to be here, uh, Mayor, Village Board. Um, I'm Ramsey Hassan with Edwards Realty Company. Been retained by the Village of Orland Park to provide consulting services to formulate a conceptual master development plan. For the remaining uh, approximately nine acres currently undeveloped within the Main Street Triangle District. Um, we've spent a great deal of time over the last year. Um, we live in the area, work in the area, uh, understand the marketplace, uh, especially this northern part of Orland Park. And um, we, our goal is to really further the village's policy positions uh, in this master development. And we understand that the goal uh, for the Main Street Triangle is to create a very pedestrian friendly and economically vibrant mixed use neighborhood that embraces retail, commercial, office, entertainment, hotel, and or residential development that's consistent uh, within the Village Center District. Um, the current existing parcels that um, are nearby the train station, Orland Park Crossing, Mariano's Fresh Market, 9750 on the park, and the University of Chicago. Now, sometime last year, uh, we did a uh, a series of surveys and studies where we had a public, open public meeting. Uh, we had online surveys and tech surveys uh, throughout the village of Orland, which we had an incredible response to. And, and a lot of that is visualized here uh, on this graph. And walkability, you know, came up uh, time and time again. Uh, community connections and quality time and all the other spheres around there that kind of build into that. But that was a major theme. Um, obviously art and culture, uh, every downtown needs. Uh, we have somewhat of an existing water feature, but to build upon that and actually have it as a, a centerpiece, uh, lots of shared space, so not just single use space. Um, so that uh, that greatly kind of was at the very forefront of the process that uh, started our analysis. Uh, these are just some uh, images of the kind of entertainment district activations that we'll talk about uh, that you know came up time and time again. Bars, restaurants, entertainment uses for all ages um, is paramount uh, here, and that's what did come back uh, in a lot of these surveys. Now. Also, the public space activation, which I mentioned earlier in an earlier bubble, um, to have a vibrant community center, you need a you need public spaces, and this does not just mean one giant park. This means potentially several spaces throughout the development, um, including a park that have the ability for uh, public space activation. Now, this is the master plan uh, parcel legend. Um, now, this was created with uh, the planning staff of the Village of Orland Park, civil engineers, along with our architects um, and engineers to not only see what the best uses are, but how they interact with each other. Um, now this, will, this is the basis we feel to create a planned unit development, and uh, it's still, this is just the beginning of the process. Uh, this is our recommendation, and you know, obviously, whoever comes in with a uh, with a more detailed plan would have to go through um, the process and to produce a final master development plan. Um, now, we recommend the following limitations and minimums to define some of the balance of uses in this conceptual development plan. In order to assure that the balance of uses maintain a mixed use blend, uh, which I think we would all deem desirable, the residential components shall not exceed 55% of the total redevelopment FAR for the remaining nine acres. So we want to limit the amount of uh, residential development and focus more on the, uh, the commercial and retail development. Um, we do feel like there should be a, an office component every downtown central business district has an office component. Um, 
we feel it's underrepresented right now in the area. So office should exceed 30,000 square feet at a minimum here. And if, a re if parcel E is developed to include any commercial space, that should be an office building as well. And I'll get into uh, parcel E further on in the report. Now there are um, eight conceptual lots right now with the balance of the land making up the area known as the Main Street Triangle today. Uh, today parcel D is fully built out with the 9750 on the park building. Uh, parcels F and G are developed with village owned public parking garage and the University of Chicago um, of Medicine building. The remaining nine acres of land are vacant and are part of this recommendation for the conceptual master development plan. Now the following, um, I'll go through each parcel and talk about the recommendations. So parcels A and B at the northernmost part of the lot. Um, this is what we're looking at, especially in down Jefferson Street, is more of an entertainment district, but still having a mixed use component. Um, currently, the village offers metro parking on this parcel. The village will be obligated uh, via previous agreement with Metra to maintain these spaces somewhere in proximity to the train station. But what this does is gives the developer some flexibility to actually develop this parcel and will not um, inhibit the development. Uh, we are requiring that any building built on this parcel be a mixed use building. Uh, we define that at, on parcels A and B. We have ground floor retail, uh, multifamily residential, hotel, parking, and parcel B, we have ground floor retail, multifamily residential, hotel, office, and parking. Now these aren't all the uses that have to be included, but these are the uses that we're contemplating. So for example, parcel A may have ground floor retail and multifamily residential, and uh, parcel B may have ground floor retail and an office component. So staying on parcel A, we recommend that the first floor of any building uh, with retail space totaling at least 50,000 square feet in the aggregate when combined. So both parcels A and B ground floor should have at least 50,000 square feet of retail. Um, with associated parking, it could include lobbies, entryways, and other common improvements for the upper stories. But the upper stories must be hotel, office, or multifamily residential. Um, Consequently, with parcel B, uh, same type of requirements for the, the 50,000 square feet on the first floor combined, and the upper story, the only difference we have um, office as, as a, a contemplated use. Uh, it's closer to LaGrange Road, has some visibility as we are working with some of the engineers on the planning um, to put, if there was a residential component, kind of putting it back by the train tracks, um, near the detention pond uh, would be a favorable and marketable site for a multifamily development, whereas parcel B would be more favorable and marketable to office users should that use be included in the multi-story um, building. We'll move on to parcel C. Uh, this is just west of the 9750 building along 143rd Street. Um, the uses that we're, we would contemplate here are retail, uh, there's been interest from daycare facilities and schools, um, additional parking, or a multifamily resi residential development. But we're recommending only multifamily here if no residential on parcels A or B. So if for some reason there's no residential on the previous parcels that I just talked about, it would be appropriate for a residential development to be here on parcel C. So this would, we're, we're looking at a mix of, you know, some uh, flexibility here and commercial uses on 143rd Street. So we have uh, the Metra uh, parking parcel, which is next to the train station. This we're contemplating uh, because we're assuming it will be needed, especially with removing some Metra parking spaces on parcels A and B, along with bringing in some uses that may have some heavy parking requirements at different times of the day. Um, either surface parking here, which it is now, or structured parking, which would be a parking deck here. So we can maximize 
uh, the parking near the metro station by potentially building a parking deck here to accommodate uh, some of the surrounding uses. Uh, the metro station, um, we're recommending that the village can really activate this and sublease a portion of the train station to the master developer to incorporate a retail or restaurant use at this key location. Um, this could also reduce maintenance costs, generate additional sales tax revenue, and provide uh, train station amenities used by the community. Uh, coming out of the pandemic, we've seen uh, ridership up. I believe there are plans down the line for increased um, increased uh, trains, express trains, those kind of things happening. So to position ourselves to have the the maximum amount of potential commuters, we have to have those amenities in place. And we think that could be a, a way to unlock that that is not being utilized currently. Uh, the Crescent Park parcel. Uh, this is currently where Crescent Park is. And we're recommending to relocate the park to parcel E for a better and more accessible pedestrian area that's really centrally located between the parcels. Um, what we are recommending for this parcel is a large scale indoor entertainment use with a capacity for about 1,000 people minimum and 50,000 square feet or more. Um, a floor area as a key element to draw large groups of people into the area. Now, a lot of um, successful retail developments, downtown areas have to have multiple traffic drivers here and an entertainment parcel or an entertainment building with an, an amphitheater is really a use for the community, brings in business, uh, multiple businesses and residents from other communities coming to our community to spend money and enjoy themselves. Um, most of the demand for the entertainment use will be in the evenings after 5 p.m., which is very compatible with the shared use of the 600 space metro parking lot and 500 space free village parking deck, uh, which, which are available after 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. respectively. So essentially here we have 600 parking spaces at our disposal that are required to be there or already there uh, that are free and most of the uses that happen right now are daytime. So we would like to recycle those spaces to have an evening use without necessarily having to build um, parking from scratch for those specific uses. So that we feel like that um, really should be utilized and looked at. Um, moving on to parcel E, which I mentioned moving Crescent Park to. Uh, that's the large parcel in the center, really, of the triangle here. Uh, we feel like a public park with significant amenities should cover at least 50% of this parcel, if not all of the parcel. Um, now, how we came to this conclusion, we, we were working with uh, white architects that are currently now hired by the village to do master planning of all the public parks. So we approached them, talked to them about um, not only the master plan throughout the whole village, but what are what are we missing? What are key elements here that can you know, you know differentiate differentiate us from other municipalities, but also complement all the existing facilities in the area? And they have some very cool ideas on, on how to activate this. Um, and I think that you know having that space and, and actually some of that shape is very conducive for talking about coming from the north where the pond is and parcels A and B coming out of the entertainment district into you know kind of a pedestrian friendly but active uh, park and then you have kind of those parking lots that we talked about um, all around there. Now while it's not a requirement if there is a commercial building to be developed on this parcel it should be uh, it could be a single use or vertical use but it's recommended to include office. <clears throat> if it's a vertical mixed use building, uh, the first floor could be retail or restaurant, but the upper floor should be office. The existing parking structure that the University of Chicago uses that is village owned um, contemplated kind of a sky deck. So there is a place, I believe it's on the second floor lobby, that could connect to a building um, directly north of it. So you know, that was kind of our thought process. Uh, if we needed to have a little, some of that office, which we are seeking um, in, this, in this area, we could put it in parcel E, have it close proximity to the parking garage, potentially even connecting to it. Uh, move on to parcel F. 
So this is an existing uh, 12,000 square foot commercial space on the ground floor of the village owned parking garage. This is a cold dark shell. Um, there's no systems in there. It's, it's essentially boarded up. So it would need significant construction to even become a white box. Um, but we think it's ideally suited for a variety of uh, village center district uses, um, you know, including without limitation, retail uses, restaurant, uh, potentially office. But that is a space where, if, uh, where it can be activated fairly quickly uh, with a, with a build-out. I will move on to parcel H. Uh, this is the, we'll call it an outlot on LaGrange Road, essentially an extension of the University of Chicago's parking lot. Um, this, uh, you know, this really is an outlot along LaGrange Road that can be, that we recommend using for retail, no greater than two stories to not inhibit any visibility into what the rest of the triangle, um, or for office and or existing parking lot uses. How, how big is that? Parcel H. That parcel H, it's about a, I think it's 1.4 acres. Yeah, but how, how big are you proposing on the? Oh, how big of a? Yeah. Uh, a building? Yep. Um, there's several different configurations, but you can do up to about 12,000 square feet. Depending on the uses. A uh, couple more things to note. Okay, the, um, I do want to mention that, and I'll go back to the first slide so we can see the overview as we discuss further. Um, so there are a couple other caveats to this. Uh, there's exclusivity that we have to be mindful of. So the, the village previously agreed to a non-compete provision within the triangle with the University of Chicago. So um, a lot of medical uses, uh, really have to be looked at to make sure that they don't uh, compete with the University of Chicago or the University of Chicago proposes, you know, it, it certainly can propose an expansion of their existing facilities. So prohibited medical uses um, are definitely in, uh, a deterrent since most of the office-based users that are in the market right now are medical. Um, so that prohib prohibits us from you know, leasing to another hospital system or another medical facility. Um, I should also want to mention that the stormwater, um, the drainage, detention requirements, and volume control have all increased uh, since this development was contemplated. So those all have to be addressed. And you know, in some cases, capacity has to be increased, which is, um, as we all know, it could be very expensive. Utilities and roads. So the utilities were put in here and the roads were put in here for a very specific development, um, which is no longer viable and you know, obviously has never come to fruition. So, you know, I'll cut to the chase. There are millions of dollars that have to be spent to relocate these utilities um, and, to, and to relocate roads, perhaps. Um, even the existing roads are pretty narrow. So um, talking about what, you know, the amount of vehicular traffic we'll have coming in there, those things have to be thought about, and that's why we're putting a lot of the parking, you know, kind of keeping it somewhat around the periphery so you don't, you know, don't have vehicles just driving through constantly, but those things have to be uh, reworked as well. Um, I discussed, you know, the parking conditions and the village's obligation to relocate Metro, metro parking uh, when there's a development of those parcels. Um, and a share, and once the uses you know are defined in here, a shared parking study should be conducted, so that we can make sure that there is appropriate parking at the appropriate times. Signage, wayfinding, and placemaking. Um, you know, we started the process, but there there needs to be a robust and comprehensive design um, over here for for wayfinding and placemaking, and in the development as a whole. Uh, to make it very cohesive. And the thing I mentioned right at the beginning, 
um, I will also end with, and that is the pedestrian accessibility. That's what kind of came out of the, the plan commission. I know it's, it's already in the village code for the village center district. Um, and it's, you know, it's something that is always at the forefront, especially here, but um, we feel like we need to make an emphasis that there will be a pedestrian corridor um, or should be a pedestrian corridor going through parcels A and B and vacating Jefferson Avenue to vehicular traffic and activating it for pedestrian use only. Mm -hmm. uh, the new walkway should be integrated with the uh, detention pond to the north of the site and all the other pathways that, uh, that surround it. Um, direct accessibility to the Orland Bikeway as well should be emphasized. Um, as a, I know a lot of people use it now. Once there is something actually at the at the base of it by the train station, I think that's going to get a lot of use from from the community. Um, so we appreciate uh, the time and are honored to have been able to be part of this, and can take any questions or comments. Any questions or comments, Mr. Mayor, Trustee Rudin. Hi, Rami, how are you? Good, how are you? How's the knee doing, by the way? <laughs> it's, it's doing better. <laughs> good, good. Um, I just had one quick question on the 55% regarding residential. How is that formula uh, developed? Is it, especially if you put in some, you know, the park and the parking lot, is that all inclusive of the whole square footage of the whole place? How does that work? Um, that's just uh, the, Before you answer that, I'm going to jump on that as well because our the number that we've been working with since the beginning of time is 45% residential. So where did this 55% come in? Well, that that's the Florida area area ratio that has to do with when we talk to the marketplace. It doesn't make sense, let's say, to build 100 units. Um, it doesn't make sense here to build 200 units. It's almost like 250 to 300 ish units are the sweet spot, and it would have been uh, negligible on my part to put something in the report that is not marketable. So if we were to move forward, uh, and we have a ton of open space, so this is just counting the, the total square footages of the buildings. Um, and you know, a 300 unit building is 300,000 square feet. So you know, we have to build, and that would, couldn't be more than 55% of the total development. So a 20,000 square foot office building takes up a lot more uh, space, land, than a uh, 20,000 square foot of residential. So those ratios were kind of thought of as what, what will the market bear here? But also, we're only contemplating on certain parcels. So that would be, you know, you're just adding more stories to parcel A, essentially, instead of spreading it out through the site. And, and Mr. Mayor and uh, Trustee Reardon, the, again, this is the ceiling. Uh, for it, it I understand it's a ceiling, but when I, I mean I've been sitting in a lot of these meetings and it was always 45 percent. Now I see 55 percent. It got my attention when he said something in the in the presentation, and I did just did the math. That's 750 square feet a unit at 300 units. That's a really small unit. So if, not if it's a hotel. I, I'm assuming a hotel you're not counting as residential. Correct. So that's pretty small units. It's basically becoming a residential area. Remind us how much the whole thing is so everyone's on the same page. What's the whole project? How many square feet? Approximately. Well, I can't really say because I'm just proposing uses here. Sure. Um, I'm not really proposing buildings. That's not my assignment gotcha. at this gotcha. time. Approximately. Six, I mean, seven hundred thousand, I would say. Because, I, because the minimums required here come to 124,000 in commercial space, which would be 150,000 in residential. And this is exactly what this conversation is about. So if we're if we're looking to develop the uh, the, the concept plan, then I think it's it'd be appropriate for the board to amend that to make it 45 percent maximum. Okay. But, Mr. Mayor, just trust you. Going back to Ron, I mean, you're, and that was me. My next follow-up question is, you know, during this last year, you've been out there, mm -hmm. seeing what the market is, mm -hmm. talking to developers, seeing what they're, what, you know, and, and presenting these general ideas, right? That's basically, what you've been doing. Yes. Okay. And so you're coming back with what you're hearing. Yes. Is that you need to make it viable and not have the city bear the, you know, unbelievable cost of doing this to balance that out? You need certain. Residential components of this to make to make it work. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, yeah. Any you know successful development, mixed-use development like this should have 
significant residential component in a uh, in a thoughtful manner. So that's why when we looked at it, um, you know, 9750 is a different type of construction. You know, that's what's called a wrap, you know, building. Uh, that's why it takes up such a larger parcel. I think there's another way to do it called a podium style, which we would be uh, which is all that parcel A could fit. So you have probably the same amount of residential units, same amount of residents, but in a smaller parcel, like on parcel A, um, maybe with a little more height, but with uh, parking kind of integrated into it, not around it. Mr. Mayor. That's Trust her, Ed. <laughs> Elevate. Where, where's it I'll switch from? with the Ed right now. <laughs> Ed's fine. Ed's fine. No worries. Um, so, one of the, just to clarify from my initial uh, introduction, basically, Ram, Ramsey and Edwards Realty is presenting what they found out in the market. Uh, as we know, some of the vision for this area, because the village acquired it and it's so important to the development of, of Orland Park, there are there are things that the village wants to see there that they wouldn't necessarily be able to require of a private development. And if one of those items is less residential than what has been uh, investigated initially by the consultant, then that's a decision that the village board needs to make. And the underlying principle of, of how we're developing this site is that the village is willing to offer the incentive in form of in the form of uh, TIF dollars, as, as, as it is right now, to make that vision come true. So it, it, it's not saying you're going to necessarily, you're incentivizing the entire development so that if there's a gap created by something that the village wants that the market can't meet, then that's what those funds are used for, subject to them being TIF eligible costs. Yeah, and, and I guess what I'm saying is that uh, we, I've been in a lot of meetings and it's 45% of, it was residential um, as far as what we were looking at. And uh, again, if we're going to provide TIF dollars for this, um, I mean, as, it's, as this is written right here, you basically could have a 275,000 square foot total development of which 150 of it is re is residential with 750 square foot units. I don't think that's what, I, I, I mean, I just don't think that's what we've envisioned. And that's the minimum required here. Um, now I realize people may come in with more, um, at, no question about that. But um, I know that it, you know, our discussions have been if we're going to, if, you know, what, what does the village need? What do we want? We want to see more office space and I realize the market won't completely bear it and we'll have to, we'll have to provide some TIF dollars to offset costs so that the rents can be lower so that office, office component comes in here. Um, uh, but anyways, that's what we've always, at least that's my position. My position is, you know, uh, no more than 45% residential and that's what we told, that's what we told Structured. If it was 55% residential, they'd probably, you know, they may have started, frankly. So it does say not to exceed 300 units and the 55% is a, a function of the whole. So, you know, when it was proposed potentially 100,000 or 120,000 square feet of office, um, you know, that fits right in that parameter. But, you know, now going to the market, we know it, we want a minimum of 30,000 square feet that we're recommending. So that's not a function of increasing residential units. That's more of a function of making sure we can still have, you know, maintain a market multifamily development and still be within the parameters of, you know, some office space. Um, otherwise, the multifamily developer theoretically could be at the mercy of how much office space are we getting this year? Well, again, we're trying to develop this for the residents of Orland Park, not for the residents that moved to Orland Park. And so, in my view, it needs to be more commercial, less residential. That's my personal opinion. It's kind of up to the board, but that's been our position, and I, I, that's been my position since day one, and uh, in every meeting we've ever been in. So I don't think this is a, a change to anything that I've ever said. So, Mr. Mayor, that, but, does that, I'm just trying to understand the process. My first time going through this. Does that mean if we stick to that? And I agree with you. I I think that we want to make it as limited of residentials we can to make it work. And then we, does that mean, you know, if he, if he went and turned around and said, okay, Mr. Mayor, they said no, 45%. He goes back out to the market, then we fill in the gap, right? I mean, yeah, and if they don't, and if the market can't do it and they're saying, well, we need, because I know right now you could fill it with apartments. Yeah. And the people of Oral Park would be justly not sure. Hey, listen, nobody here, Ramsey, the, the, uh, our, our staff, 
None of us were here when this disaster was started and we've sunk a hundred million dollars into it, mm -hmm. right? None of us had anything, none of us here had anything to do with that. We're trying to correct that. But personally, I'd rather see it sit a parking lot for another 10 years and turn it into something that's good for us in the long term than accept something that's not good for the village in the long term. Okay. I, that's, that's my personal opinion. I, okay, I appreciate that. And I generally agree with all that. I'm trying to figure out practically today what we're voting on and what we're doing is to say, go out to the market, come back, and then we can decide, is it so much money to fill that gap from what the, the, what the developers will develop and what we're willing to pay, which what we've already paid is an enormous, like you said, right? Is that, that's what, that's so the what next we're step. doing is setting parameters to go out to the market and say, you must meet these parameters. So we're saying we're not going to take, we, right. and we if nobody comes back, you, nobody comes back. We, we expect you, you know, minimum or maximum 45% residential. Yeah. If we say that, that's what we expect to come back from, from the marketplace. And if he comes back and says nobody came back or some people came back, but they got to move this, this is what their caveat is, then well, we can we make could always we could always gotcha. adjust if we wanted to, but I mean, that's my, my personal opinion. I my, my personal opinion is the people of Orland Park want, I mean, you saw what they wanted, and residential ain't one of them. <laughs> I agree. I think, would we all agree on that? So we want to minimize residential as much as possible. And I would say even in the document, if it's 45%, that we want 45% is the maximum, but we'd like to see the minimum amount of residential needed to make the project work. And, you know, obviously a hotel, that's not even counted as residential. So if you get a hotel, that obviously, you're never going to get to that number with residential. And board have any other comments? Mr. Mayor. Trustee Cassinas. Just wanted to thank you, Ramsey, for bringing your insight, your experience. You're a local gentleman. Um, your family's in the commercial business, so that really showed in your presentation, and I thank you for that. Thank you. My pleasure. Any, any other comments? I'll entertain a motion to, to amend the motion to, uh, to change the recommendation or the, the recommendations to uh, minimum, maximum 45% residential. So moved. Second. Uh, any comments on that? Call the roll on the amended amendment. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Compass. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Wani. Aye. Trustee Reardon. Aye. Trustee Raschewski. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Any other comments? Call the roll. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Compass. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Reardon. Aye. Trustee Raschewski. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Is there any unscheduled visitors? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Call the roll. Trustee Compass. Aye. Trustee Cantinas. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Reardon. Aye. Trustee Radishevsky. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. We're adjourned uh, 720. Actual 720, not that, so it's like eight minutes.